Jonathan from Potency.World, a revolution in girls' education. I'm here in my capacity as an interview host for Business Live Global. We're meeting another exciting entrepreneur or mover or shaker or game changer in the world and finding out what makes them tick and a favorite song which will play at the end of this short interview. There's only 10 minutes to go, so um, take your time now. Have a listen. Co-founder of My Energy and angel investor, I give you Jordan Me- Marie Brompton. Jordan, how how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm all the better for seeing you. And just by chance, I watched the previous interview that you'd given and heard the reference to Pinky and the Brain. And yeah, I'm Pinky and the Brain all day long, mate. So uh, I absolutely love yeah, that. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's it's fantastic. <laughs> Do you want me to give some context behind that? Please. Obviously, I'm Pinky, and my business partner, Lee Sutton, is the brain. He's that electronics engineer that I just, his mind, I just just blew my mind. I met him about 14 years ago, and he was tinkering away, hand-soldering these devices. And I thought, you know what, your brain is brilliant, and we could take over the world with that. I spotted the niche, and I knew I could sell it, and I was like, well, Pinky and the brain, it's just developed over time, and now people... um, People reference it all the time. It's just, I loved that cartoon as a kid. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been doing a uh, marathon of watching or catching up with Pinky in the Brain. And it's interesting, actually, because this is totally off topic, but it's interesting because there's an episode, uh, the Christmas episode, and um, Brain is really berating Pinky all the time. Rah, 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 and he, he hates presents and cards. And he opens the uh, letter that Pinky had written to Santa. And he said, Dear Santa, please give Brain the world. I know it's what he wants. And he, I tear up at that man. So um yeah. So anyway. God, it's so clever on so many levels. It it's is so indeed. Great. Anyway, well, we, we must uh, go back on top on topic. Yeah. I met you at the Inspirational Women in STEM and Construction at the House of Lords, uh, where you were a winner. What was that like? Oh, it was absolutely amazing. I, do you know what I was going in? I didn't really know what to expect. It was one of those things because life's been so busy and I feel like I get dragged from pillar to post. And then I found myself at the House of Lords and it was one of those pinch me moments where I thought, hang on a minute, this is real. And then I got there and I met some of the most incredible women. And then hearing the stories, I just felt so humbled, inspired, blown away. The stats were blowing my mind about, you know, it's still the underrepresentation of women Massively. in the industries. But then also like the the strides that were making and had the powerful I just felt the power in the room. It was a mm. really, really mm. good event. And yeah. then I was honored to have won um the the award and it's it's meant a lot. Well, I was looking on your website for my energy earlier, and mm. I mean I, I, so 180% growth from 2020 presumably yeah. it's continuing to grow because now more and more places are going like we're going to have to go electric vehicles yeah. so what's going on at the moment with your business it's been wild and the growth has been insane so we're only seven years old and we've just been growing 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 last year we grew as well granted it wasn't as much because when you are a, of a certain size we've, we're over 350 staff now it's very mm-hmm. it becomes very difficult to maintain that level of growth yeah. but we are still growing in an emerging market we've felt the market slow down a little bit through the cost of living crisis obviously people um it, it, it's a it's a bit of an outlay to get solar panels batteries an electric car um but what we're all about is empowering people to make those decisions when they can and remove barriers the next challenge will probably be the financial challenge because mm. i believe that um renewable energy should be a necessity not a luxury so we're looking at ways that we can make it more accessible to more people um but yeah growth is still very much on the cards new markets growing the markets that we're already in we've got a long list of products that we want to develop and release not just hardware but software as well Excellent. and services so it really is very much we're still on that mission of grow and take over the world so the uh, indeed uh, <laughs> so so the um the software is optimizing power usage throughout your entire sort of lived experience 
Nailed it. Yeah. So what we do is um, control the largest loads in the house when everything starts switching to electric. We mm -hmm. help decarbonize heat and we help decarbonize transport. And we then, if you've got battery storage, you've got our eddy device connected to your hot water tank and you've got an electric vehicle, those three things are pretty powerful. And mm -hmm. what we want to do is decentralize energy, like put more power in the hands of the prosumer, we call them, or our customers. They become part of a network. And then it's up to them if they want to um opt in to balance the grid. if more and more homes become decentralized that allows more renewables onto the grid and everything balances out nice and smoothly amongst electric vehicles heating and it means that we can decarbonize a lot faster and sustainably so we're not just mm. like striking up huge coal plants to power the electric vehicles that are on the road we're doing it in a much more we don't want to be an electricity gate like we was diesel gate we yep. want to make we've learned our lessons hard and bring the customer on for the ride. So they, you know, because they are very much a part of all this, it's down to all of us to make, you know, small decisions um, that impact the greater good. And I believe that my energy is truly spearheading that sort of revolution, definitely from the home point of view. It yeah. looks fantastic. I mean, the story on the website, which obviously will be in the in the notes of the show, um, yeah, inspirational. And uh, that 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 new plant that you built to centralise all your operations yeah. is it is it actually that sexy looking in real life? It really is. Oh, it cool. really is. I've put a lot of effort into that. That's where me and Lee are so different and like Pinky in the brain as well yeah. because. I'm like, look, if we're market leaders, we are having a sick HQ and we are having a sick factory and we are not doing this by like, we're not half art in it, half art in it, we're going full hog. And if we're going to be market leaders and we're going to want to attract the best recruitment in the country and we're wanna, gonna, gonna want to keep employing people, we need to have an attractive place to work. If we're going to want to pull people out of their homes to come to work and get more involved in bu genuinely building something, then they need to feel like they're in Silicon Valley in Grimsby. Yes, yes. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, presumably you you know Ross Shaw. Who, sorry, Ross Shaw. Is he the guy that I met? At, um, I don't know. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. I'll give you his details after the after yeah. the recording. He's a, a advocate. Has set up this amazing uh, um, network of people that might yes. be able to help you on a pro bono thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you his I details. Met at the event. Yeah, 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 yeah. So listen, I mean, obviously, STEM construction. It's I don't think it's even arguably male dominated. And what's alarming to me is that the biases so i don't have a smartphone so i don't have whatsapp groups so i don't get into these conversations between blokes but they're all pretty harsh and so there was a story on the bbc recently going oh yeah FTSE 100 companies have 40 percent female boards then you read the story and you find out that only two percent of them are executive yeah so yeah. how do we overcome this total imbalance i yeah that's interesting because you, you, i'd never want to be the token woman mm. um you know on a board that would just just so offensive i think um i strive to really lead by example and just i think the only way that we're going to do it is by doing events like this and highlighting women that are executives and how they've managed and to tell the story and through education and um I think we have to have a serious conversation about um, women having a stigma that the careers are over once they've had children, because mm. I think that's where it ends. I think women's careers build up, build up, build up, and they're just about to start get going, you know, around your 30s, late 20s, 30s, yeah. when you prime to then reproduce and have a family. And then it's very difficult to get back into the swing of it. And I also, I even feel that women carry that stigma that they've mm. literally like written themselves off. Yes. And I say my female employees all the time when they're saying like, oh, well, I'm, I'm, they come to me and they go, I'm thinking about wanting to start a family. Like it's a, like, I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, on the exactly. you go, yeah. like leave. Yeah. And I go, that's amazing. And then they're like, yeah, but I'm really scared. I'm like, why are you even putting that pressure on yourself about thinking about work straight away after that, whether you can come back? You might decide that you want to stay home and be a full-time mom. You might decide that you want to take more flexible hours. You might decide that you want a nanny and your career is where you're heading. Like, Absolutely. let's just empower women to ha to take a moment and understand that that is a huge part of your life and not to put the added pressure on it, but take it step by step and then encourage employers 
So if females want to get back into the workplace or want to pick up the career, that the door's wide open, ready for them mm. to throw themselves back into it. And even if it's a few years that they have off or that they need off while their hormones settle and mm. balance and then... And then I think there's a lot of work to do around menopausal women as well and perimenopausal yes. women and helping them navigate that because I've just watched my mum go through it and she said she doesn't know how she'd be able to hold down a full-time job when her hormones, and it's not stuff that we get taught. No. It's not stuff that we no. understand or get taught or understand our bodies. And I think if men and women understand each other on a cellular, more of a cellular level and more of an empathetic level, then we can find ways to like grow and bend together and just have a new normal. On that very note, then I'll put you in touch with a woman called Kate Usher, who's my menopause coach um, connection. And yeah. uh, she she's all over that. Um, I mean, and I think also that COVID showed that hybrid working is possible and therefore there exactly. not need be a break where you're actually stopped. We just need to get rid of all the conventional ways of working and all that, you know, the conventional ways of teaching and everything because the world is changing at yeah. a rapid pace and technology is changing the game. AI is changing the game. Us humans have got a lot to navigate over the next few years, but I think more open, honest dialogue, leading by example and being very willing to bend and flex as long as you're getting the results. Like yes. I'm about handing a woman a job because she's a woman and that's that. That's not going to get us anywhere. No. Uh, it needs to be on merit and it needs to be when we're, you know, you know, when it's when it's earned and deserved. And as long as we're getting the job done, don't worry about what time it was done. Don't no. worry if she's up at 10 at night, getting all the hours, you know, women are very like all or nothing a lot of the times. And I'm speaking from my own experience. You know, we need those moments where we crash and the world's just a little too much and mm. hormones are in. But then when we're coming out of that, we're unstoppable. So yeah. it's like having to lean with our peaks and troughs of how we work as a species. Well, this is the ebbs and flows that make us human. And, and you're quite right that there are moments where, you know, it's like having a superpower. So yeah. listen, we, we've come to the end of our time and your song is coming up, The Flaming Lips, Do You Realise? Which has yeah. a really quiet intro for like 30 seconds. But anyway, what are your plans for the future? Um, I just want to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm loving where I am at the moment in my life, in my career. I love my energy. I just want to keep growing it to become a household recognizable brand. I want it to live way longer than me and leave a real like lasting legacy. So it's just build, build, build. Fantastic. So um, would you be open to, because I mean, this is a broadcast all around the world. Are you looking for investment to scale yeah, we're, we're exploring all options at this cool. moment in time. We're self-funded at the minute, profitable, yeah. doing well, but we are open to all options. Excellent. Well, look, if you're watching this uh, interview, you hear it on Business Life Global Radio or see it on our YouTube, reach out, uh, leave all of Jordan's notes and contact details in the notes of the show. Jordan, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I hope Have you enjoyed this one. Uh, yes, I've pre-listened to it.